Chapter two, video two, how y'all feeling? Blessed, right? We're all blessed. And uh, so you're back in the same place probably, more or less the same people. You've got the same format for today's meeting and hopefully you don't have the same cookies. If you do, then they're probably stale from last week. But anyway, hope you're treating yourselves well, you deserve it. Okay, so it's kind of cool to have a church in your house. But anyway, just a quick question. Hopefully you prayed right before right before you put on this video, hopefully you prayed in your group. If you didn't, hit pause right now because it really is, that is the most important moment of your whole entire meeting. And you don't need to be listening to me. You need to be listening to God, talking with God. And if the only thing you do in your meeting is you pray and you totally forget about this video, you totally forget about the discussion, you're good. But anyway, let's talk today. I brought my favorite book. Your favorite book, maybe, hopefully, probably. This is the best-selling book of all time. Over 5 billion copies have been produced over the last 2,000 years. Nothing else even comes close. If you want some trivia, trivia, no other book has even sold 1 billion copies. This one, 5. Not even a billion Mao Zedong's Little Red Book that they forced everybody in China to buy in the 60s. That's second. Harry Potter is third. Lord of the Rings is fourth. But anyway, this is number one, but by so big a margin. It's the most studied book of all time. It's the best known book of all time. How many books are you going to find that people memorize, right? Even the Quran isn't even on the top ten books published of all time. The Bible's number one. The Bible's number one. But can you believe, can you believe what you read? Can you believe what you read? Can you believe this book? Can you believe what you see on television? Can you believe what you read in Wikipedia? I don't know. People say that Japan exists. I've never been to Japan. I'm trusting people who say that it exists. I'm trusting people who say that they came from there, that they lived there, that they visited there. I'm trusting people who say that Japanese culture exists. But I'm trusting. And so whenever we believe something, it's about trust. And, and who do you trust? And so this book, is it true? Because look, if you go straight to the first chapter of the Gospel of St. Luke, who's Luke? He's somebody who comes after Jesus a little while afterwards. He probably didn't meet Jesus personally. It doesn't seem that he did, because here's what he says. He says, many people have undertaken to compile a narrative of the events that have been fulfilled among us, Jesus' life. So these events, just as those who were eyewitnesses from the beginning and ministers of the word handed them down to us, Right? Luke is hearing about Jesus from other people, just like you and me. We're hearing about Jesus' life from other people. He said, well, I too decided, since other people are doing it, I too decided after investigating everything accurately anew to write it down in an orderly sequence for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may realize the certainty of the things that you have received. The people who wrote the Bible wanted certainty for you and for me. We live in a world we don't know who to believe. And they want certainty for you and I. We can't live our lives without certainty. And we can't believe in God without certainty. That's what this is for. If you have questions about your faith, if you've got questions about the church, if you've got questions about who you are and why you're made for more, God wants you to know the answer. You probably have one of these on your shelf, right? But hey, let's be real. This isn't an easy book to read. It was written 2,000 years ago. It was written in languages that you don't, you don't speak, that I don't speak. It was written in ways that they talked amongst themselves 2,000 years ago. And actually, some of these parts go back 3,000 years or more. We're talking about something that you can't just pull it off your bookshelf like Harry Potter. But let's go to the basic core question. How can I get to know the Bible better? There are ways to do that. Google it. Google it. You find Bible studies of all kinds. If you find one that's Catholic, it's better. It's, good. it's fuller. We have a little bit fuller Bible than other Protestants do. The Jehovah's Witnesses don't use the same Bible that we do. The Book of Mormon is not in the Bible. Be careful about what you choose. Try to look for something that says Catholic or has a bishop's name on it that's been approved by the Catholic Church. But 
getting to know that. You need it, and you've, you've got your own time for that. So, this book, let's ask ourselves, when the guy on the bus says, yeah, but why do you believe in the Bible? Well, you need to know why. Check it out. Made for More, Chapter 2, has this incredible study where they go deep into what the Bible says about itself, what people wrote about it in other contexts, and then also how many manuscripts we've got. This is the book that we know the best from the ancient world, but by far, there's nothing else of history, of literature, nothing else that we are more sure about going all the way back to the very beginning than this, than the Bible. The book is really good at explaining that. But let me ask you this, how do you know that this really is for you? How do you know this really is for you? Because it's for you and me. It, it wasn't written for Theophilus. It wasn't just written for Theophilus. Luke was writing it for Theophilus. Was he a real person or was Theophilus supposed to be you or me? We don't know. We don't know. But this is written to you and me. This book is a love letter from God to you, to me. This book is meant to inspire your life. And maybe you'll say, Father, I don't need to hear about this. I know the Bible's for me because every time I go to it, I find answers. I find peace. I find more certainty. Great. What is that? That's the Holy Spirit. No other book does that. No other book does that where as you read it, you read something different every time. And as you read it, the Holy Spirit is speaking to your heart. And if you're looking at me going, uh, I haven't been there, I haven't felt that, Father, take it off the bookshelf. Spend some time with it. Guaranteed you'll see, guaranteed you'll see that the Holy Spirit uses that so you can get to know Jesus Christ better. So you can get to know God's plan for you better. So you can get to know yourself better. Guaranteed. But start with the Gospels. Start with Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. It's the easiest way into who Jesus was and it's the easiest way to get to know him. If you get to know Jesus, you're getting to know God. You're getting to know God's heart. Get to know Jesus, do it this way. Don't get to know him off what they say in the documentaries or what the guy on the bus says. Get to know Jesus who, through who, what he said about himself. And as you do, you'll see that each one of those four Gospels is a little bit different. Matthew's style is different from Luke's. John is completely different from the rest, and Mark is just this boom, 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 go straight to the point, lots of stories type. They're a little different from each other. And you'll see, too, there are tiny little differences in the story they tell. But you know what? That's the amazing thing. That's the amazing thing. All those Gospels were written down 30 years, maybe even a little more, after Jesus died and rose again. Don't ever say Jesus died without saying and rose again afterwards, right? They're written out 30 years afterwards. Now, look, me, if they write a biography of me 30 years afterwards based on things people were still saying about me, how short would that biography be, right? How many things are anybody going to remember about me 30 years after I'm dead? Zilch. Maybe a phrase or two. Maybe they always went around saying éxito tras éxito when he spoke Spanish. Maybe that's it. Maybe he was bald. Maybe that's it. How many things are people going to remember about me? They might not even remember where I'm from originally before I got here to Yonkers. But Jesus, they did. Why? Because after he died and rose again, and, and then after he went up to heaven, people kept telling the story because they went up to each other and said, hey, have you heard about Jesus Christ? About how he changed my life? And then they would say, hey, these are some of the things he said. These are some of his sayings. And everybody remembered a few sayings. And everybody remembered the stories. And as you read these Gospels, you get the sense that, you know what? These guys know exactly who they're writing for. They're writing for people who can ask other people who saw Jesus what the truth is. All right, and if I go over to your house and I write down a description of today's meeting, who was there, and I write down what the room was like, and I write down everything that got said. Well, I need to be careful about that, right? Because if I'm going to go publish that, 
and I don't get the story right, well, any one of you can come up to me and go, hey, hey Father, you messed up. That isn't the true story. That's not exactly what happens, because you're eyewitnesses. Same thing then. Same thing that Luke didn't get to meet Jesus. He wants to get the story right, because if not, he's going to get called out on it. People are going to say, yeah, I was there when he multiplied the loaves and the fishes. I was there when he raised Jairus' daughter from the dead. Actually, I am Jairus' daughter. People are going to say, I was there when he rose from the dead, too. I was one of the 500 at once that saw him. And those people were going to call out Luke if he didn't get the story right. And as you read, you read something that's very carefully written. And you can tell. You can tell. This story of Jesus, as they were trying to get it down, they were doing their darndest to get it right. They were doing a huge service to you and me. Because we can open this book. And we can say, you know what? This really is truth. This really is it. And the more that you get to know this Bible, the more that you get to know this book, and the more that you get to know God, and the more you see how much it all fits together, and how all these really scary, kind of hard to understand books in the Old Testament that come before the New Testament and the story of Jesus, how they all fit together and get fulfilled in the New Testament, how it's one big, huge picture of God's plan that's coming together little by little. All right, I'll be honest, it takes years and years of study to get to that point. But when you do, when all the pictures of the puzzle start to come together in this big kaleidoscope in this, bu in this book, it is so beautiful to see what God's doing and to see how important it was for the history of the church that there be five billion copies of this book out there. So you and me could pick it up and say, this is God's love letter to me. This is God telling me how much he loves me like nothing else could possibly do it like no miracle, like no church, like no beauty, like no art could possibly tell the story of how much God loves me. And so it all comes down to that again. Look, you are much more than you think. You're much more than you think. If God went to all the trouble over a thousand, over a thousand years to put together this 1,400-page book for you as a love letter to you, to give you answers, in your life to lead you closer to him if God went to all that trouble you're so much more than you think so much more than you think do you not think God has better things to do the answer is no he doesn't he could make a thousand more universes like this with a single word he could make things that are far more splendorous than the Grand Canyon and than the great seas of the world he could make things that are so much bigger than the great galaxies and he cared enough about us to spend eternity giving us his message, giving us his word, so that we could share all that truth and all that life with him in heaven. You're so much more than you think. You're made for more. So am I. So as we continue to go through this, as we continue on our journey through this book, as we're trying to discover, well, if I'm made for more, who am I and who is God? Get your book, read up on chapter 3. It's the most important chapter in the whole book. We'll be talking about it next week. But first, let's just take a moment now in the group and ask ourselves some of the tough questions. Look, me, me and this book, what's our relationship? How can I grow? How can we grow together to get to know better the Word of God and the Word that God has for our lives? Mm -hmm.